so it's a full room for our first talk. That's nice. Hello and uh, welcome to the first talk of the decentralized dev room. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, please, when you leave the room, keep it clean. You have the trash bag over there. So put your empty bottles and uh, glasses. So we're going to start with our first talk. So please welcome Santiago Saavedra and uh, Konak Modi for watching them, watching us. Web extension exposing privacy leak. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, thank you all for coming here and thank you for having us. Um, this is the, uh, this talk is a bit of an experiment that's coming out because uh, both uh, the local sheriff project and Tracula uh, went to the call for participation of this dev room, and uh, we uh, we were asked that. Uh, we merged our talks and make a decentralized one, so in this dev room it made sense. Um, because we were making an effort to explain um, more or less uh, the kind of the same problem from two different approaches, and I hope that the result is, uh, is good for all of you. So what's this problem about uh, surveillance? Well, um, it's prevalent that in, we all know that there are lots of trackers on the websites that we most likely visit um, every day. Like, for example, Google is embedded on more than 80% of the web pages that we visit in Europe from data from who tracks me. And uh, there's a lot of actors in here and a lot of companies that are involved in, in this issue. Uh, but why, why does this happen? How does this work? Well, on one side, application developers and website owners uh, want to, uh, at some point, outsource some of their non-core parts of the application or the uh, service they're building to other companies, right? For example, to build analytics, A-B testing, uh, recommendations, advertising. Some of these use cases are legitimate use cases for, for businesses to, to have, and they are based on the capitalistic model that we are all familiar with, that website owners pay these third parties to provide them with services. But some others, in fa uh, instead of doing that, they use business models made out of the surveillance capitalism. They made money out of you instead of the website owner. And in fact, the owners may even receive part of the revenue. How does this work? Well, uh, I I every time you visit a web page or you interact with a digital object that's connected to the internet, you generate a trail of data. And that trail of data is then uh, aggregated and brokered by these third parties in a data market where it's then uh, grabbed by other actors who can aggregate them and cast profiles of you and from that profile then uh, you can get behavior analysis of the people and that behavior analysis feeds back into the system and at some point profiles are so good about you that you can predict what's w what will happen to a crowd of people and with that, when that happens you may be able to predict real life results like the results of an election. So we think that this is a very uh, interesting problem to tackle and that we uh, have to do it in a holistic approach. For example, this is one of the challenges that we're uh, going to just explain. Imagine you're planning the, your next trip. For example, you want to go to a free software meeting. Uh, you may have come by train or by plane. Somehow you have a booking ID that uh, is fed back to you when you pay for your ticket and from that booking ID you may be able to then uh, get into the reservation to maybe add your passport details or your full name or something like that. And in that page there may be some trackers embedded, some pixels that uh, allow third parties to know that you visited the booking page in time and, and so on. But the thing is that in, in many cases these pages include the authentication token or include some details that can lead back to these trackers being able to also see your personal information, including your full name, your passport information, your home address, and so on. And this is exactly the issue that local sheriff uh, focuses on, dis on displaying and on telling you about. So I will now give the stage to Conark to uh, talk more, more about this issue. So before getting into what local sheriff uh, actually tries to solve and how it tries to solve, let's try and understand uh, the example that Santiago shared. Basically, the URL structures, 
can have some private information in the URL as query parameters, or the URL might have some authentication tokens, which leads you to a page which has private details. We name these types of leaks as telltale URLs because these URLs are now also being shared with a lot of third parties. Like one example is, uh, let's say if you are if you ever donated to Mozilla, after you finished your payments, uh, you get redirected to a thank you page. Now, all the information that you entered while doing the payment, your email address, currency, country you belong to, amount you've uh, transferred, it gets added to the URL itself. And because this page loads a third party, in this case from fonts.googleapis.com, and the URL is not cleaned, the same information in this case is being sent to googleapis.com. And that's not the only third party that is present on this page. There are about seven third party domains which are present on this page. Most of them legit, maybe not legit, and we really do not know what happens once the URL leaves the user's machine. What we know so far is that this information is being sent to various third parties. Another example, for example, this is a very popular site called trainline.eu, which helps you book train tickets. Now what happens is, uh, after you finish the booking, you get a URL which has an authentication token. The URL itself is clean, but if you have access to this URL, you can potentially access the user's booking, delete it, cancel it, change some data, uh, and do all sort of things that a legit user would be do doing on its booking. Now this same concern. Uh, it also has a lot of third parties. In this case, it's Facebook. First, the leak happens to the referrer. Second, the, Facebook, the Google Analytics script on this page actually reads the URL itself, does not clean it, and sends it back home. And it's not just Facebook and Google. There are about 17 third-party domains that belong to five different companies on this page itself. So your booking details, which were supposed to be only yours, are now with 17 different companies that you did not even realize. That's again an example of Flixbus doing the same thing. They have an auth token in the URL, which is now being leaked to fonts.googleapis.com. Then this is the case of Lufthansa. For example, if you're traveling international, you are required to put in your passport information during the check-in process. Lufthansa was not cleaning the URL, which basically was being shared with a lot of third parties, giving access to the user's passport information, date of birth, etc. Furthermore, someone else could also actually upload some fake passport, and when I'm traveling at the airport, maybe I get uh, caught in some uh, bureaucratic things. And again, there are about four third-party domains on, present on this website who get the exact URL which will lead them to my booking and passport details. Spotify is another example. If you've used Spotify desktop app last year and until March, so if you log in on Spotify desktop app and then you click my account in the desktop app, it would open a URL in your default browser. Now, you will not need to log in again in your default browser because the URL carries an OAuth token, which leads you to your profile details. What was happening in this case was they had some trackers on this page and were not cleaning the URL. So basically, all those trackers were getting this OAuth token, which potentially gave them partial access to your booking. Uh, the details we're talking about here are your date of birth. Are you a paid customer? If you're a paid customer, what are the last four digits of your credit card number? Which company your credit card belongs to? right? And there were about 25 of these trackers present on that page, which were getting the same details. Similarly, if you've ever ordered food online, a lot of these services, I'm going to talk about foodora.de here. So the prerequisite of getting home delivery is you need to enter your address. Now, some websites do a reverse geocode on the address into fine latitude, longitude values, and then they put that information in the URL bar itself. And because the URLs are not cleaned, they are now being shared with a lot of third parties. In this case, my home address is being shared with 18 third-party domains when I'm ordering food online. And I can go on and on and on about these examples, but that's not what I'm going to talk about today. In a gist, there are a lot of these URLs being shared every now and then when you're transacting on the internet. It is not just about you being tracked across multiple domains. It is also about websites giving their customer data to third parties when it is not needed in the first place, and also giving them potential access to critical data. More worrying is that user's consent is never there. We did one test on a website which was leaking such telltale URL to some companies. We actually found their privacy policy is pretty outdated, and the host names that are actually sending data are way more as listed on their website. To make matters worse, the websites themselves do not realize that they are sharing these URLs with these third parties. For example, uh, this is uh, a case from Emirates.com. Their privacy policy states that at any given point of time, you are not supposed to share your booking reference and last name 
with anyone else because they can access your booking. But at the same time, Emirates.com was actually leaking these same two values to 12 different third parties. <laughs> now, here's the missing piece. This looks scary, it is a serious problem, and it is happening everywhere. But somehow this topic is not being talked about. And if I tell you the horror stories that I have when I'm reporting these issues, it's hilarious. We can talk about them maybe offline. But the point here is, we believe that there is an important aspect missing here, which is the tooling. Right now, if we have to inspect your own traffic and see if these leaks are happening for your URLs, it's very difficult. You need to know some network monitoring tool like MIT and Proxy or need to know dev tools. You need to understand how first party, third parties work and what data is being leaked. leaked. And you have to do a lot of manual steps to actually figure out what is happening in your browser. right? And this is the problem we want to solve. So we took four key details that we wanted to solve with local sheriff. First, it should be easy to install. So you do not really have to be a technical user to install the software. So we thought, let's create a browser extension because then it will uh, hit the masses. Second, it should be able to monitor all the network traffic between a web page and all the third parties that are there on the web page. Then all this data needs to remain on the user's machine. At any given point of time, the software, local sheriff or any other software, is not allowed to send anything back home because it's critical data itself. Then the users can actually understand if it's a first party, for example, I visited a page, or it's a call that got loaded on the first party itself. And after all this data is collected locally on your machine, you also get a search interface on the extension itself, which helps you now find out what is happening and what private data of yours is being leaked to which companies. As an example, once you install Local Sheriff, uh, this icon appears in your toolbar, and it starts to monitor the web request using the web request API from browser extensions. Then uh, when, the U when Local Sheriff gets a request, it classifies whether this is a first party request. For example, in this case, it will classify, oh, it's edition.cnn.com, so this is what the user visited. And all these different calls are actually what is happening as uh, third party calls on that particular web page. Then additionally, we also want to map if a particular domain is known to belong to a certain company. For example, if you load CNN.com and there is a call to Maximizer.net, we want to tell the user that Maximizer.net actually belongs to Oracle. So we also want to get the parent company to create a detailed uh, introspection on who is actually collecting your data on the web. So for this, we use an open source database available from WhoTracks.me. We ship it locally on the client side with the extension itself, which contains this mapping. And then finally, this is the interface that local sheriff would have. First of all, on the top, you would see have any of data points entered in forms been shared. So basically, we assume that details being entered in the forms are critical at the first place. So it automatically flags if uh, you entered a value in the form and that has been seen being sent to any third party. So here it will list down the value you entered in the form and label it as yes or no. And if you click on the yes, it will then give you a detailed log. As a second step, let's take an example again. As a second step, let's say after installing local sheriff, I went to this whole process of donating to Mozilla again. Now what will happen is, I go to the search interface and I enter my email address to see has this email address been shared with any third parties. Now as you start typing in the search bar, it will list down that yes, this email address has been shared to seven third party domains who are owned by two different companies by one website. In this case, this is the website. Then you can also take a look at the detailed log saying how this actually got leaked. Was it referral headers? Was it in the payload itself, which is being sent to analytics companies and things like these? If you want to do more advanced analysis, let's say I do not want to share a private information that is being leaked. Rather, I want to see how much information does Facebook has on me in my browser. So what I do is I actually start a uh, fresh profile on browser. I visit a few websites, then I look for this pattern which is basically used by Facebook to track or send data to its analytic services. So when I search for facebook.com slash tr, it lists down that there are four websites uh, that have a Facebook tracker. And also, Facebook puts a cookie, in this case it starts from fr is equal to some value, which is being set on my machine and sent back home with all these uh, information. Then I say, okay, let me take this cookie value and then see how many websites are being tracked by Facebook, and the list explodes to about 11 websites now. Now, if you take a look at this example that I shared before, trainline.eu, which has potential access to anyone who has this URL about my personal details, my full name, my email address, it has a Facebook tracker, which also has the same cookie and sending this URL back home. 
Coming back to the Fedora example, which is sending my lat long values back home to Facebook with the same cookie, which is actually, if you put it on maps, you can see the exact house where it was ordered, is also being sent back. And now if you look at this, this is like an analytics backend of any tracker that would be. You have these four URLs along with that cookie, which is enough to say that this same user is going through all these different domains. But also thanks to last two URLs, now if this tracker wants to de-anonymize me on the internet, it's very easy for them. Because now they can say, ah, by the way, this train line booking belongs to this such and such person, and this such and such person has a probability of living at this address. Local Sheriff can not only be used by users, but also can be used by organizations and developers to test their own apps. Before the leaks hit the production systems, they can include Local Sheriff in their testing frameworks and start testing for privacy leaks and audit their applications themselves. It's available on all platforms because it's in web extension, so you can basically install it from Firefox Store or Chrome Store and test your favorite websites. Or when you're checking your flights or trains back, while going from Postum, uh, make sure to see how it's getting leaked. Last, this local sheriff tool helps people who already are aware of online tracking world and want to see the next step of what data is being leaked. But there is, a, there is still a huge gap between understanding what is happening in the online tracking landscape. And this is where the project from Sofia and Santiago comes in, which is Dracula. So I'd li like to hand back Mike to Santiago to explain Dracula project more. Thank you. So uh, our idea is how to, is the other challenge, is how to make this approachable to everybody out there, outside this dev room and outside Fosden, and outside, uh, you know, this uh, technical context that you need to be aware of to understand these issues. And, and that's where, where the project comes in. Uh, we started out in, uh, in a citizen laboratory uh, in Madrid where, where we, um, there was an open call for participation uh, that was more geared towards uh, maybe um, journalists and artists about um, migrations. And we came up with an idea of migrations of data through the digital world. And we were chosen to, to pitch this idea to a group of collaborators that ended up uh, being on the project. And uh, after we came up to uh, tell them about the, all the whole idea of how the technology is tracking you uh, through all these means, uh, they wanted to be able to explain that to their friends and how uh, could they appeal to the broader public. So we wanted to empower them to be able to do just that and so that then uh, other extensions such as maybe a local sheriff or uBlock or something that uh, really uh, helps you protect from that uh, can happen and can go um, more broadway, more uh, to the broad uh, sense. So after being able to um, go from this uh, state of things where we have, uh, when we're on the technical side, it's uh, sometimes difficult to uh, get down to just the simplified point of how to use things without all the technology involved. And when you finally get that and uh, everything, everyone is on the same table and is able to understand that uh, it's uh, better to be able to, uh, to get the idea around. So we started, we started out with, the, uh, with uh, Mozilla Lightbeam as an example of the idea that we wanted to convey. This was one of the tools that we used to, to, uh, make them, uh, to try to make them understand the problem. But um, they felt that this, uh, this kind of visualization uh, um, gave you too much information at once for what uh, for the basic idea of the, what they're trying to solve. So we, want, we, want, we worked with that and we, ha we have a web, a web extension that is a fork of Lightbeam that works with another visualization set. The idea being uh, having a metaphor about the real world, about the world that you know and the underworld where everything is happening, but it's not just as easy to be aware of it. So uh, we first tried with trees that you plant or, or the, web the websites that you are visiting, and then the roots underneath are the points where uh, the data is being shared. But someone told us, and it's true, that uh, trees don't uh, share roots in the bottom. So we changed the realm to the fungi, the fungi realm because mycelium uh, is really uh, the thing where uh, different fungi in, in the upper world uh, share their roots in the underworld. 
And from that, the deeper you go down, the more uh, the darker it gets on the background, and the more uh, rooted the trackers are on the uh, the websites that you're visiting. So this is the plugin working, and uh, it has uh, some sort of uh, information in general about the visualization that you're doing, but also on the left. Um, there are some information pills of uh, ideas about tracking in general, and also the most prevalent trackers that you have. And uh, as you see, what I was saying, the more to the bottom that you go, the more uh, rooted they are on all the websites that you visit. And you always keep track of the last five websites that you're visiting, so that uh, not too much information is crowded on the on the page at once. And also. Uh, this visualization is unique to every user in a given point in time, and uh, if you install uh, some extensions or utilities to block uh, information, to block, uh, sorry, to block connections to the outside world, then you will find this um, visualization change so that you don't get as deeply rooted uh, connections because all these trackers will uh, you will no longer connect to them. Sorry, I have problem passing this slide. Um, Sorry about that. There it is. So at some point, uh, you will have a more uh, clear ground of what's happening, and you will not find these connections that I was saying. But now, how can we appeal to the greater audience? In one side, I think we all must get, um, build technology that allows us to communicate all these issues clearly with everyone else so that you, you do not need to have uh, as a uh, technical background as, um, as you would if you just uh, try to convey the most information possible. So uh, we were talking yesterday in, uh, at dinner how we could uh, communicate and collaborate with uh, our joint work to appeal to a more uh, better audience, a uh, greater audience. And um, local sheriff, has um, an idea of notifying the user from automatically from the uh, form data that is being leaked and turning it into some kind of privacy analysis engine so that other other tools can use uh, local sheriff data as as a as an engine for all these things and the idea is that Tracula becomes some sort of UI for local sheriff so that we can uh, on, on one side have the technology and on the other side have the visualization and we want to share that for JDPR compliance. And uh, this is our first talk at FOSDEM, so it's really nice if you gave us feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sophia, for all the graphics that you <laughs> shared. So, is there any question? Uh, y a les gens d'Exodus dans la salle pour l'après? Okay. So, questions? Uh, two questions, if, 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 if you don't mind. Uh, one is, uh, as I understand, when data doesn't leak your, like, doesn't leave your computer or handheld, you cannot actually connect something what was happening on uh, your laptop and your mobile device. So is it in your roadmap to safely share and collect all your activities from different devices in one place and, uh, and analyze it all together? And another question um, is related to ad blockers. So ad blockers, at some extent, can block uh, some trackers. How this works with uh, local sheriff uh, like, would it show you that some parts of requests were blocked and you was protected partially? Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, 
So to answer your first question, uh, right now, because it's just a web extension, so it's not yet possible to analyze or even analyze mobile apps, but that's something uh, which is on the roadmap to maybe build something equivalent of local sheriff to also analyze mobile apps and then maybe think about connecting it as a complete profile. On the second question uh, about the ad blockers, so maybe we can, so yeah. uh, about the second question, uh, what's the possibility of leaks if you're uh, using some ad blockers? Uh, I would say yes, there is still a possibility because there are so many different ways uh, such sensitive data can be sent outside. And ad blockers will not block everything that is being sent. So it is likely that you will still leak some information because they are basically based on um, host names blocking and things like these. So it's not the perfect uh, match to block certain things. At some point, website owners and third party tool developers need to own this and fix these mistakes themselves. But we can talk about it uh, more in detail offline, maybe. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for being here. I have a very simple question. Um, you're saying that one of your use cases is to train the users, train them to understand what privacy is and how to make sure that uh, their privacy is being violated step by step. Um, do you think that it's easy to present that to my mother or to my grandmother that um, she is using simply Facebook to check out on the family news? Or, for example, why should I use uh, Tracula instead of the EFF's uh, privacy badger, for example? Um, thank you. Personally, I was trying to explain this, this problem to my mother, and I, I used the Chakula, and she understood. So I think uh, that the, the advert user is going to understand it with this. And I don't remember the other question. The idea was that we also tested this with the other groups that were on the open call, so they were our beta testers, so to say. So. Uh, uh, of course, this, could, this can be improved, and uh, we hope to get more collaborators and more people involved and have more projects like, like this uh, happen with non-technical people so that they can better understand it and empower them to build upon this and make better tooling for it. And was, what was the other question? Okay, so what's the benefit to your mother if she knows uh, what is happening in these things? Well, she can then install other uh, extensions or other things to be aware of it and block if it she, does, she wants to and uh, in any way um, have the conscious decision of whether she wants to share that data or not. Thank you very much. We have no time for more questions. Thank you. Thank you.